Hi, I'm Rob and this is Gems of War. Now Torios here has been given a bit of a hiding lately and taken to the slaughterhouse by a few different people saying he's really bad and basically rubbish. But I disagree, I actually think he's really good and he's just been being used in the wrong teams and in the wrong kind of way. The main issue that I've heard so far is people complaining about his damage output being no good. Deals damage to all enemies boosted by his attack, life and armour, then knocks the first enemy to the back, so people have been trying to boost his damage. But I think that's the wrong way to go about using him. He's a bull. Bulls work best in a herd of other bulls, causing a stampede and just rampaging through the opponent. So basically, the best way to use this troop is... Don't think of him as somebody who you're going to try and increase the damage on and kill the opponents on his own. Think of him as the leader of the pack. He's going to go wading through doing okay but not major damage to everybody all at the same time then the rest of his buddies follow behind and finish him off that is exactly the way i'm going to use him and that's exactly the way he works in this team ferocity deals damage to an enemy and a random enemy boosted by his life attack and armor and that can be a massive amount if the enemy uses red deal a double damage that is unbelievably damaging against red opponents as well as that Give 4 to all skills on all Tross allies when matching 4 or more gems. So with 2 of these in the team, we get 8 to all skills on all Tross allies when matching 4 or more gems. As well as that, Tross himself gives 4 attack to all red allies when matching red gems. So basically, we get boosted by getting red gems and 4 matches. And, and the way I think of it is, again, I'm not thinking about Tross as someone who's going to work out, you know, and kill the team on his own. These bulls are going to fight as a team. They're going to work together. Tauros is going to soften them up, Frosties finish them off. That is exactly the way I'm going to go about it. Now, Rage Weaver is the natural weapon to go with this for a couple of reasons, and I'll come to a really important point in just a second. First of all, it deals splash damage. So in a similar way to Tauros, softens up three of the opponents if you cast on the second or third one for the Frosties to finish off, then creates four red gems boosted by Tauros allies so we'll have all Tauros allies because we're in the shaman class so that is going to be the maximum amount that we can do but going back to the color now the color i don't think is a coincidence and i think this is where this team really really shines rage weaver uses blue and brown Tauros uses red green and yellow so the only color we're not using is purple now if you don't use purple the absolute best banner is the maze banner because it's the only one that still gives two plus two benefits. We've got plus two green, plus two red, and minus one purple, which obviously we do not care about. But look at Torios. Red and green are the colours he wants. So basically, that is absolutely fantastic news for him. And in the Shaman class, we're also going to start with 50% mana. So he's going to be ready to cast in no time at all. And it's a fantastic banner to have for that. And I don't think it's any coincidence that that banner works so well with Rage Weaver and Torios himself. In the class, we'll be going Shaman. The traits of all Taurus allies start with 50% mana is superb. And he gets a little boost to magic himself by that um, gain one magic for each green ally. Talent tr talents trees wise, we go for Ferocity, Counter-Attack, a Root Trap. And Nature's Aura does sound like it'd be a bit bizarre because obviously we want red for this team mainly. But where we get plus two green, that Leaf Storm actually comes in handy right at the beginning. And Armour of Light, Bloodthirsty, and Bull General would be the ones to get once... You know, if you've got them, I don't have them yet, but um, that's the ones I would pick if I do have it. Right, so um, basically we're going to jump into a PvP on the right-hand side for the three-trophy thing. Once the game actually decides I'm allowed to do something. In your own time. What have we got? Wrath. Obsidious, Doomed Glaive, and Mercy. The thing where that knock the first enemy to the back really comes in handy is if when you've got like a web spinner at the front or a Leonis Tower or a Stone Hammer, something really awkward and hard to kill or, you know, a tanky troop at the front. You can just knock them to the back and then often, but they hide the hero at the back. Obviously, this isn't, this isn't the hero, but sometimes the hero is in last place or somewhere else, and you can just mess up the, the um, order of their team, and it can work in your favour in a really, really big way. Alright, I'm going to try and get the 
weapon charged up first of all, this is really what we want. Take any four matches when they come along because they are super beneficial. Does give give us a boost to power on Trorios, but I'm, like I said, I'm not actually that worried about that. We can use our Frosty straight away to get an instant kill. They've got a bandit summon straight away, but again, that's the way the cookie crumbles. I have to deal with that sort of stuff. And we'll just do a little bit of damage. Now we'll get the weapon charged up. We can cast the weapon now and get some more decent damage. Uh, we can only hit the top or bottom, so we'll do it on the top. Get loads of red for the team. Create loads more four matches. This is keeping on charging up the team. Think about bulls when they fight. They're not um, subtle creatures by any stretch of the imagination. When they fight, the more you poke them, the more you antagonize them, the more angry and more powerful they get. This is why I love this game sometimes, because it's just so well thought out on some of the troops. Bulls are angry. To, you know, you antagonize them. They get angrier. They get you fight even more ferociously. This team I've got here, if you don't finish it off quickly, this, their power is going to spiral out of control and you're going to get absolutely annihilated. I can cast this now. We've already, what, I saved 120, nearly 130. Plenty of damage all around. Now we can finish these off with the ferocities. So that worked out nice and easy. Let's jump to the next one. A little bit of a lag going on, but... um. Little tip here, it's not always the game's fault when it does this. I've noticed, because like I am downloading a couple of games on the PlayStation at the moment, as well as something on the PC. And if your uh, broadband resources are getting used up by that, and it's uh, you know running at full max, then the game does lag ever so slightly, but that's more to do with your own uh, broadband rather than the game itself, because if I stopped all these downloads, I probably wouldn't get that um, laggy bit in the middle where the gems are going around slowing things down so no no red enemies on this team which is interesting so we're not going to get that double damage this time so we'll see how well it performs without that double damage from the frosty couple of four matches though always take them from the top to bottom if you can if you take this one here first you're going to mess up um, this up here probably and not end up Managing to get two of them in a row, look we can now. Right, no way of making these ones connect. Or that one, so I'll cast our weapon. Yeah, lots of red for the team. Like, Quirk's armor can be annoying in uh, first place because of that resurrect chance, which does seem to happen a little bit more than 20%, let's be honest. But we can now cast Trorios, stick him to the bottom. We've got the Moon Rabbit up top. We've got more four matches to collect first. All helps the team get boosted up. And I'm going to cast this again. Get more good damage. Loads of managing for the team. But it wasn't loads that time. It was just all right. Now she's cast. Oh, oh, must be frozen. Yeah, we didn't notice I was frozen then. Now we can start um, doing some damage, I think. Let's start taking away their barrier. Oh, now they've got another barrier. We've got two cast to this, so we can certainly get rid of those two. Now the last one. Two hits on him and it's done. And that was with me making some mistakes as well. I'd actually cast things in completely the wrong order then. But still blitzed that PvP team pretty easily. Wasn't in any danger in any way, shape or form. And none of them were red opponents either. That's really relevant. We didn't get any bonus damage there at all our team wasn't fighting to its true strengths the true strength is when it's like a you know red we've got two red opponents here so i'll show how easily this team can deal with zulgoth because zulgoth is normally a worry in certain teams but with frosties in the team it's not a worry at all and i know this video is about torios not uh ferocity but the point is that Torios fights best in a bull team. He's not an individual, he's in it for the team. Teamwork makes the dream work and all that. Those stupid, supposedly inspirational sayings go. Let's get a lot of incidental damage on Zulgoth straight away. And now what we can do, we can just use a Frosty, 
and say, see you later Zulgoth, you are irrelevant mate. Now we can use the other Frosty, take out Centurion, and the Heart and Soul is ripped out of their team already, and then we can cast our apparently rubbish Mythic to get rid of the um, troop that was there. Their hero is gone, and we've just got to finish off Leprechaun. So he's bad? I don't think so. I think he's actually really good, and I really enjoy using him. He's not going to be mega fast in most PvP games, or it's 412 for that matter, but it will be incredibly resilient because our health and life and armor look is all going up at the same time. So when you get into one of those slugfest battles where it's like a you know battle of wills sort of thing, who's going to last the longest, that's where this sort of team comes into its own. And we'll finish them off with ease. And dungeon and battles were difficult and slightest really, to be honest. Dealt with with a plomb. Right, so there's my Torius team. So no, I don't think he's a bad mythic. I think he's actually a really good one. Um, of course, there are faster Explore 12 options out there, so he's not great for that yet, I suppose, but um depends. If they're all red, you could rip through them really, really quickly. So if you're doing Explore 12s in a predominantly red enemy-based area, then that could be really fast on that as well. So there's my Torius team. There's the video. If you enjoyed it, remember to hit that like and subscribe button. And I'll catch you again next time. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.